Hey. Here we are. Are we live? Yes, you are. Good stuff. Well, hello everyone. I've just been making some changes to the setup at the last minute, so. Uh, that's going to reflect. There's nothing much I can do about that. But now, um, hmm. turn this up so slightly more for improving the reflection. I guess so. No, I can't see the uh, can't see the bars now, can I? Or the reflection of that. Um, as long as you can see it. Hmm. I need to move everything over a bit. I can move the canvas that way. There, that's a slightly better, slightly better view of things. Right. Ah. It's nice, nice and close to the to the painting. It's full view. Good. Um. Now, so today I have some daffodils. Um. And I'm doing them on a dark background, which is shinier than I'd like it to be, but. Um, sometimes not everything's as we would like it to be and today is one of those days so uh, I guess I'll just accept that let's do a bit of scraping and create a general clear mixing area it doesn't have to be super clean and I'm going to leave that dull green there because I think I might use that in somewhere or other. There we are. Uh, and today I thought I'd chat a bit about uh, complementary colours. Um, I'm also going to be using a wet in wet technique which would have required a smoother canvas but um, it won't dry. So uh, I've got it primed over there. So I'm working here on a just a primed canvas which is quite unusual for me. It's not sized or anything. So it's really going to absorb that first layer of paint. Um, and whether it looks any good or not, I don't know. I'm half tempted to just paint over an old painting. And you know what? I might have a prime canvas. Let me have a quick look. And it might be in red, which could be useful. Now, where would that have gone? I guess I imagined that, didn't I? I've talked before about my dithering process. There's a lot of dithering before I start painting. Uh, today is an extreme version of that. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to apologise for it or stop doing it. It's actually part of the process. 
Um, so if you're watching this later on, you can probably skip through until you see some drawing going on. Uh, no, can't find that canvas. Oh well, so that's frustrating. But, uh, well, I guess that's how that goes. If I don't find something in the first two minutes of looking for it around here, that means it's gone. So, yeah, I guess I'll just crack on with this. Okay, um, so complementary colours. Uh, interesting uh, thing, complementary colours, because people sometimes spell it with an I, complement, but they don't necessarily complement each other. Um, quite often they clash horribly. Uh, there's the old adage, uh, red and green should never be seen. Hang on, let's just change this. And, um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's simply... Is it a thing, red and green should never be seen? It, it is. That's, that's the thing. Other than flags, I guess. That's the thing people have said. Um, well, I know. Uh, you know. So, if you think of Christmas colours, that's very a lot of red and green yeah, together. Christmas, yeah. But it's not considered a tasteful arrangement. And Christmas, by its nature, should be a bit gaudy. It should be a bit bright and um, and uh, tacky, loud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, however you want to call it. Um, the point is, is that actually complementary colours always go together. But the, to make them harmonise involves um, having one be a strong colour, a high chroma colour, and one be a low chroma colour. And you can introduce one into the other as well. So that's a very useful thing to have. So I'm going to start off with a purple. And I'm going to make a very bright purple. So I'm going to have my colour wheel is going to have two main leanings. It's going to have yellow and purple. Uh, I make it slightly bluish. That would be important. So, should we go to the palette a sec? There we go. I'll add a bit more of that. So, alizarin crimson and ultramarine make a very strong purple. Um, more than you would ever really need it to be. So I'm not going to be using this colour directly anyway, except for maybe in, uh, as a substitute for black. Um, and it will wander into the greens as well of the stalks and things like that. But this is more of a tinting colour. They're both transparent colours, so um, uh, it would need a little bit of, um, what would you call it? Yeah, need a, need a bit of opaque colour in there to sort of give it a, a substance, a surface. But it would be perfect for putting some drawing on. And I'm going to use a big brush ish, size 10, I think. Um, and let's stick some of that on here. Okay, and let's think about how I want this to go. Um, a few weeks ago, I did some lilies. And I picked my sort of my favourite area of light and worked out from there. And I think I'm going to do the same with this. So when they go into the bean shop cafe downstairs, they'll, they'll be like a little family. Um, and I've got this sort of arch, arch of yellow, which, which kind of works around here. Okay. There'll be a bit of that wandering off. I'm not going to worry about them getting off the edges. Uh, but I don't want them coming off the top, so my bit, that big flower is going to go here. There's a trumpet of that one there. That's going to be a good spot for that. Now if I start working into it. This is a nice sort of stuff here, a few shapes in there, not entirely sure where they go, it's a bit rough. 
and a few shapes and uh, it's going to be under here somewhere which is going to constrain those this one will sit off on the side where's that going to put my bars it's going to put the middle of it here um, but quite a bit below so I'm not going to have the reflections and that kind of thing um, but I quite like it being central there's a convention of making the vase central if it's about the flowers it's all about that explosion out of the out of the vase as it were so yeah a bit of vase here that line's going to go up through not sort of against that hmm, a bit steeper even that's going to lead me to the top of that vase there so I've got this sort of pseudo horizon. Now the purple in the background, this is just to get some tone in, but the purple in the background is going to have to be a much lower chroma than the yellow, unless, it, unless I want it to really fight. So last week's effort with the, uh, with the, with the angle poise and the was using red red and green against each other but quite a crisp green and, a, and very light which made it a much lower chroma but yellow is a light colour so when it's light it, it can be at its highest chroma only when it's light uh, and purple is naturally a dark colour it's, uh, it's at its highest chroma when it's dark its greatest intensity so if you chuck a load of white into your purple it's going to make it weaker if you make your yellow darker, well, we wouldn't even describe it as yellow anymore. It'd be green or brown or whatever. That's 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 how we'd think of it. Yellow as an identity, as a colour identity, needs to be a light colour. Or it doesn't make sense to us. Uh, so, yeah, just finding a few of these sort of big shapes here. I get that. Oh, sort of lost my place a bit here, but that's okay. That's going to be something like that. That gives me an idea of the the overview, the general shapes, and what have you. Uh, I don't want to get too fiddly with this, but a little bit fiddly might not might not do any harm. Hmm, so the, the vase is almost in. It's either got to be all in or or half out. Yeah, that's going to be a tricky one. So that's a, that's a first go at the composition. The other thing about today and the way I'm going to do this is it is going to involve a lot of scraping, so be prepared for that. Um, so I'll start off with some wiping. And I think I can promise a bit of spatula madness. Uh, well, maybe not madness this time. Maybe more a more uh, uh, measured approach to the use of the spatula. Now, it looks like I'm destroying everything, but actually I can still see the shapes within it. I hope you can too. Recognise them. Um, a little bit of thinners. I can say there was some of this here. Uh, and so I'm going to be uh, continually destroying the edges as I go along. And uh, there we go, that's going to be kind of important. As that happens, uh, I'll be putting them back again afterwards and pushing and pulling and scraping and adding until sort of the energy of the flowers starts to show up. What's this going to do? 
I've got a little shape there. So finding my place, getting to know the image is going to be a starting point. And then after that, uh, I can relax a bit. So these daffodils, I bought some daffodils, they didn't open. So I went around the town getting all the ones that have been blown over. <laughs> so only if the stalk had broken did I pick up that daffodil. And the result is a fairly messed up manky display. <laughs> but you can't tell from where you are. Um, I can see the bits of dirt on them, but I, I think I probably won't put that in. Uh, mm. So now I'm going to start to refine a few shapes, a few sort of background bits and pieces. What's this doing? What's this doing? And then when I'm ready, actually now might be the time, I'm going to mix a thick, dark, oily paint. So I mix myself a black with some raw umber, a bit of blue just to make it neutral. It's got some nice lumps in it. Hooray. I'll get away with it. Um, and I'll chuck a whole load of this purple in as well. And I'll put a bit of mixing white in, which actually I'm going to rescue from another palette rather than just squeeze out more. Josie says we should say have a garden full. <laughs> I'm not sure I get it. What does, it, what does she mean? Well, I, I should have said because they have a garden full. And she'd have, she'd have brought me, uh, she'd have brought me daffodils. I always see. Had I thought of it beforehand? Oh, well, right. yes, uh, I thought of it uh, this morning. So <laughs> probably a bit late. Right, it's a bit of mixing white. Let's chuck some of that in there. So there's a purple tint to this. There's a purple leaning. Um, I'm not going to go too dark with it. Put a bit of actual titanium white in there. I keep it quite grey. That gives me room to go darker, and I can go more purple when I go darker. And let's get most of that colour here, and um, let's chuck some oil on it. Really oily. This will give me a surface I can slop on, move around, and it will naturally mix into what goes on top. Sometimes it's sensible to uh, add the oil gradually so that you can keep a consistent mix, but I'm prepared to just mush it around. So I know my recipe for this, I can always make more. This probably isn't enough. It looks like a lot of paint, but it's not, it's not that much. A um, bit of thinner still on the brush. You know what, let's get the excess of that off. Okay, now we can start to chuck that on. There's a nice bit of outlining here, so sort of thinking about how these shapes go together. And then really sort of chuck it in a bit. And the same thing here and here. Uh, where was I? To retrace my steps a bit. Jangly there, not have to worry too much about that edge. Ah, it's going to move the top of the bars down, so okay, that's good. I'm happy with that. You know what, now I'm going to do this a slightly different way. And uh, once I've got these shapes on, I'm going 
going to put in just a few other bits and pieces. So the old close one eye, blow your vision thing going on now. matching up pretty well. Sort of. So I'll, pu I'll pull some uh, some lights out of it afterwards. This is proper mushy paint. It's really uh, what's, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Very loose. Lots of lots of oil in it. And you can see it's sort of splashing a bit do more of that and I'm going to chuck a ton of it on there as well. Um, yeah I'm quite lucky this isn't a particularly uh, strong tooth that, uh, on this canvas. It's, it's quite a, it's a smoother texture. this is on I kind of want something behind it as well so a lot of this drawing is just practice and then I'm going to push it back again scrape it back again Again, because it's flowers, they could be in a slightly different configuration. They could be slightly different uh, shapes or sizes, and it wouldn't look wrong. So I can give myself a little bit of artistic license with it. Uh, but I do want some of the sort of trumpetiness of these daffodils to come out. So I've still got this other paint, which is there. So this, this, and this dark I've put on is a kind of a threshold. So everything in the daffodils is going to be lighter than that. None of it will reach quite the same tone, and I'll only be able to darken it by adding green or purple, which would turn up the, sort of the colour contrast a bit again not entirely sure where all this stuff goes but uh, and I can use that unoiled paint to create a, uh, a harder edge as and when I need it um, so if I get a bit more white in there bring a little bit of that purple back my next tone up and that that can be oily and a little bit of thinness I don't want it to go on too thick Just a few drops of oil spread out thin but it will soak into that just simple primed canvas it's got nothing else on it mm. Mm. let's get the excess off so uh, anyone else commenting anybody else uh, joining in don't be afraid to send me a message or any stupid questions um, 
And uh, of course, I won't tell you if that's a stupid question. I'll, I'll be polite. Uh, all right, is this working? Kind of. Yeah, so it's sort of vague. No, it can be even lighter than that, I think. Is that too much? I'll put a bit more purple in it. That's still a bit bluey, that purple. I'm going to put a bit more red in there as well. Warm it up a bit as it approaches the... Uh... It looks grey from here. It's grey? What, from here? I thought you said great. Well, that'd be uncharacteristic. <laughs> oh, <you're wrong. laughs> oh, Michaela says it looks great. Thank you very much. On the screen? Yeah. Like really great or just a bit great? A bit great. Right. <laughs> okay, so there's my purpley of blue and yeah, so I can sort of restore. Some of these other colors as I go along. And some of it, I'll just let it blur in. And we, yeah, I'm gonna keep this pretty loose, actually. So, some of the yellows when they go on will have this slightly purpley halo around them. Uh, the grey is good because it will contribute to the green and it means that there's a, any sort of hue it does have in it should kind of complement the uh, um, the or complement the the, uh, the yellow um, but it would also complement the yellow Some other shadows here. There's going to be some shadows under there. Um, so I'm mostly thinking about where the shadows go at the moment. Um, some of those shapes. Some of it's a bit unsure. I'll go back to that purpley colour. Again, put a bit more red in it. Uh, and you're right, it is grey, but now once it's grey, I can add bits of colour to it, like this. And where those yellows are going to be bright, like around here, uh, especially around here, I can put in some dynamic marks that work against those edges, and also will sort of work against the yellow, but they don't interrupt too much. There, there'll definitely be a bit in there, and some in here, and some on the inside as well. Definitely a bit more on the inside. Yeah. Right, well, it's what looks like some complicated drawing going on up here, so I'm trying to kind of skip past it, but. Why would it be wrong to start with a yellow? Uh, it wouldn't. Ah. Um, or would it? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, no, uh, it's about establishing the relationships. So for me, the easiest place to start from is from the low chroma colour. Now, something I might do, in fact, I will do, I'll do it now, is now I can get a bit of pretty much, just do a brush mix, of pretty much pure yellow, a bit of white. Oh, wakey wakey. Mm, I took you. Okay. Um, I have a tiny dab of green in there as well. Tiniest bit, just to sort of tip it over to the lemon. There we are. Once I've got a proper lump of that, I can put it here. So, is that going to do enough? That's one of the bits where it's the brightest yellow, as in, in here. Let's see, how's that going to work against it? You could even just get some pure cadmium yellow on it. Really turn it up. Ah. 
and see what it does. And that's that's my that's my maximum yellow. I can't go past that. So all the other relationships have got to relate to that. Right. Okay. Right. So I could put a bright yellow on at this point to get that reference, uh, and maybe chuck it in another few places. So I guess I'll. Hmm. Is that a pet or is that? What is that? Yeah. Yes, yeah, see, see, there's a bit of yellow in there. Put the dash off here. Some there. Some there. It's already mixing in on the surface, you can see, so there's not an awful lot lost from it. This might be quite good for putting some structure in, actually. So there's some yellow down there. Uh, like I said, I really can't get any more yellow than this. Look at that shape. Not sure what that's doing. Neither is it. Okay, who else is going on? Down here, not an awful lot. Okay, that's too yellow, needs to be more lemony there. Yeah. So orangey bits, bit of a petal there. What about up here? Okay, there's a bit more. Josie asks, uh, so you're going for a bluey purple, not a red purple. Oh, um, yeah, blue's going to be kinder to the yellow and give it more contrast. Um, there's some warm yellows in, so uh, the, the, the oranges would harmonise with a, a red quality behind. So it's quite a ready one that I've got hanging up, but... Um, Uh, yeah, in terms of um, yeah, I mean, I yeah, I can shift it. That's the point. It's I don't have she to be thanks. absolutely wedded to it right from the off. Um, and there, like I said, there isn't a right and wrong way of doing it. It's getting those color and tonal relationships to sort of turn up. And then the most important thing is going to be edges. Uh, and interestingly, the important edges are going to be the broken edges. There you are. So you can see this sort of mixing in on the surface and getting gloomier as it goes along. Uh, where else? Yeah, so that'll have a sort of a some shapes there. get some more of this blue in here so actually that that can have a bit more blue in it darken that down uh, that's not entirely sure is it but I'll chuck something in it to smooth that off what's this up to get rid of that and I can clear a few spaces as I go along as well, so if I've gone over a whole bit that will have yellow in it, well, that's not the end of the world. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I can sort of restore it afterwards. Yeah, here. Solidify that up a little bit. Going bluer again now. Going over some of those edges. Yeah. 
so I've got, got a ground in now of sorts, or a first layer at least. Um, and I've got a colour range that I can refer back to. I guess the next thing I would do this is a good question, isn't it? Is start mixing some of those greens and yellows. Now the greens, as I said, I want to be really quite neutral. So there is a dark green that I'm definitely going to use. And I'll darken it. Where should I put it? Let's put it over here. No, that had absolutely zero effect. tube of paint. Uh, it's not that old. Um, it's probably lasted me a year. It's an incredibly strong colour so it does go a long way. Um, in fact just as an example I'll get a bit of oil on the brush on, on the knife sorry. Let's wipe that. And uh, very stiff, so I'm going to mix a slightly looser version that I can actually dip my brush into. Pop that there, and then what's left can go in here. What's that doing? Is it shifting it yet? It is just like I said, this is a very. So I need a little bit of mixing white in it. Just to reveal it, there we go. So it's got a slightly purpley quality to it. Um, colour's too strong there, but I can mix another one next to it that has a little bit of red in, which will actually push it back to the purple a little bit. needs to be duller. I'm going to put a bit of raw umber in and a bit of red. Let's soften it down a little bit. There we go. And again, put some of these dark shapes in for the, the stalks, as it were. Yeah. Yes, lovely duffs. So they, they really are a, a symbol of uh, of the coming spring, and uh, I think we really need that right now. <laughs> it's been um, we've had a grim few weeks of weather and darkness and all of the, all of the rest of it. Why did you choose that type of green? Um, uh, I don't understand the question. Well, this, oh, this is for the shadows. 
So the, oh, light, the lights will go on top, so this is going to be quite loose. Oh. I'm still using it to find my way around what oh, goes I see. where. It's a um, and there's a bit of oil in it, but it's not been incredibly loose. So that's sort of coming down there. Now where it needs to get a little bit darker, it will have some, uh, what would you call it? Uh, some purple added to the shadow. And uh, yeah, that should that should do it, I guess. Uh, trying to keep my place. Remember where I was looking. Yeah. Yeah. The lights. So the lights will come afterwards. They're not forgetting what happens here. Let's just scrub a load of green into that and deal with the rest later. Um, hmm. think about what's next. What's next is uh, I'm also going to need some of that yellow. Right, so we got Anne Condi oh, hi Anne. Uh, joining us Lovely. and she says good evening regarding mixing and shifting colours and tones etc can you recommend a good reference book on how to do this? On that you had I think that's probably oh a reference one book. that you had sorry one that you had. Um. I have one that you used when you were starting out, precisely. Yeah. That could be a long time ago. <laughs> no, well, it is a very long time ago. Uh, so. I was given a book for helping out with, um, when I was sort of 14, I think, I, I helped out with the A-level things in the because I used to hang about the art department a lot and they couldn't get rid of me so they figured they might as well make use of me. So I helped out with the A-level uh, stuff. Um, um, and uh, uh, I got given a book uh, in, uh, by my art master um, as a thank you. Um, he said he'd pay me but then he gave me a book. <laughs> but no, I was very glad to have it and it was a very well chosen book and it, it meant a lot and it's called choosing and mixing colours for painting. Shall I look it up who that author is? I've got it up there. You've somewhere. got it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so see if you can find it. it. Can you keep painting? Yeah. Uh, choosing and... And choosing and mixing colours for painting. <laughs> take a while. The thing is there's loads and loads of good books so actually um, well I'm sure there's loads of good recommendations. There's colour principles and they are, there's a few different versions of them, but the most commonly quoted one is called the Munsell system, M-U-N-S-E-L-L. -L. And the Munsell system is a way of uh, formulating colour relationships by a, a set of rules, effectively. Um, it's very applicable to painting itself. Um, it's, it works very well to sort of try and incorporate it into a, a painting method. Um, uh, and it's really just a matter of the, the three qualities of colour, which are hue, tone and chroma. Um, there's also colour relationships, but colour relationships is a different thing. And um, actually I learnt most of it from copying other artists, uh, experimenting with what they did to trying to get their effects. I mean, if you if you look at um, you know the the impressionists, for example, there's a lot of just sticking purple in there for, for whatever reason, 
um, uh, because it because it, you know in, in, in lots of greens it interrupts things it's that complementary color sort of breaking things up makes it vibrate more to the eye Surat wrote some extraordinary things about the nature of color some of which is so esoteric and mysterious that nobody really still quite understands how he meant them to be applied um, okay no it's the only thing that says colour. No, I can't remember who it's by. Is it big or small? Um, medium. Right. <laughs> okay, so I've got a bit of that purple colour, a bit of this yellow, I'm mixing them together. The end result is a sort of a warm, warm colour there. If I take a bit of this blue, do the same thing there, see what this does. That's going a bit green. Well, so that's a, that's a good colour to have as well. I don't want to something to look for next time. Yeah. I'm afraid. Uh, that's it. Okay. The, the other thing is the... Let me see. So yeah, I've got this purple here. So a lot, a lot of these things you can experiment on the palette. So I mixed that purple earlier. If I take a bit of what's left of this dark purple and just put the tiniest bit of yellow in it, I end up with this dark greeny colour. And that's because it's, it's blue leaning, the purple I mixed. If I take a bit more, in fact I can take quite a lot more, a bit of that grey as well, mix that in can push it back. Now you can hardly see the yellow but it is there, it has changed this colour slightly. Now I'm using cadmium here because it's opaque and that, that helps things. There we go. Very dark greeny yellow there. I'm going to need more of that. Um, I'll take some of this one here. What's left of this purple? Put that here, put half of this yellow in it, and a bit of what's left there. Mix that together. Now I've got this sort of dull greeny yellow, which is actually going to be quite good for whole areas. Go back a bit. So somewhere in between the two. Okay, now I'm getting to a colour I think I can use for shadows and what have you. Uh, and I generally make a warm and a cool for each one. So colour temp. So there's lots of things about colour. The interesting things about colour. Once you've got the idea of the Munsell system, uh, which doesn't take too much effort. It's not that revelatory either, but it's you know, it's worth getting your head around. Um, yeah, once you've done the Munsell system, to then look at actual qualities of colour. So that thing of what happens when you put purple into your greens in little little dots, you know. Um, how do you hide it? So you can hide one colour in another by making sure it's the same tone. Um, we're quite sensitive to tonal changes. We're less sensitive to changes in hue. Um, well, it's actually, it's a, it's a bit of a, a bit of a big, uh, big question, isn't it? Alright. Where was I? Oh, yeah. I'm going to make a warm orange here. So we can heat it up. Um, I'm going to make this lighter colour. A bit more yellow in that. Uh, and I can also accent it, I can accent some of the lights with a really greeny yellow. 
which I can use a little bit of this viridian. There you are. If I chuck a load of white in that, I'm going to use titanium white so it really bleaches it out. It's like emerald colour. It is, it's incredibly bright. Um, but it's the brightness becomes more important than the hue. <laughs> the intensity of the colour is so unnatural that you know that's um, that becomes its 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 dominant contribution, if you like. So there's a bit of yellow here. Yeah, it's quite a green one, but it's still still on the light side. So I've got a collection of lighter yellows. So I'll put that there. It's like a pale pale greeny one. I've got this one here, which is slightly warmer. Uh, I've got this one here, and then I've got the sort of the pure yellow, which is quite intense. Um, let's leave a bit of that out. And then my dark ones. Again, I'm going to need a whole load more. I'm going to mix some more of this purple. in that. I'm going to add some yellow. Let's <laughs> see what it does. Yeah, it's quite a warm shadowy colour. So I want, that's that's the warm one, so I want a cool one as well, which is more like this grey greeny one here. So I'll get some of this grey. A bit more blue, bluey purple. Put that in. So I've got a cool one as well. Right, and um, I'll stick a bit of oil into each of these. We can have some oil. It's quite. Fun. I quite like experimenting life. I don't know why. Uh, Particularly, <laughs> it should be it should be more scary and nerve wracking. But I guess uh, the good thing about painting is it's, it's just not that important. <laughs> oh, it's the most important thing ever. But you're just you're allowed to fail at it, and there's no consequences um, unless you're stupid enough to try and do it for a living. <laughs> but that's an extra bit of a push as well. Uh, hmm. You know what, I'm going to take half of this orangey one, let what's on the knife kind of pollute it, push it down. That's made almost no difference at all. There you are, I'll do all of that. So now I'm going to go really loose marks, a d uh, oh, four brushes probably, wa warm and cool, light and dark, and um, hmm. A couple of new ones as well. I know it's exciting, huh? Using new brushes. Oh, they're good. Uh, so let's go with this. I mean, some of them are exactly the same. Why would you have three of them? I mean, I know you can use three different colours with three the same brush. Yeah. Thanks for answering your own question. <laughs> <laughs> it is an awful lot of brushes. Yeah. Right. So now that's going on, I'm seeing how warm it looks. So I'm leaning towards the warm. Um, That's a nice, that's a nice warm shadow. There you are. Something going on there. Like I said, I can put these edges back afterwards. Now this paint's quite loose, but I'm not applying it really thickly. Uh, there's some warm shadows. There's some in here. Actually, they're going to get cooler, crisper than in there. Again, that's going to be cooler under there, but behind it, 
There's a few warm shadows behind it. Uh, yeah, bits and pieces. Don't quite know what that's doing. Uh, where else has got some warm shadows and under here? Oh, that's definitely warm. Yeah, actually quite warm. And then cooler. Uh, warm shadows there. And there. And there. Um, where else? Here. There's, some, there's quite a lot here. And if I think of these big shapes, think of some lost edges, then the, the differences between one flower and another start to disappear. Uh, so that's that. Yeah, this will have some. And have a bit pointing down there, and then there's a gap, and yeah, okay, that works. What's this doing? Oh, there's a load of warm shadows in there. If I'm not sure about it, I can move things around. Uh, let's go over to the cool ones. The cool shadows are going to be a lot more greeny. There's a bit. There's some. What's this doing? Oh, they get a bit darker as well. That's too dark. I'll lighten that ever so slightly. What's this doing? A sort of cooler under there. Bits. And the oil, the oil is allowing it to spread fairly thin. Yeah, it needs to stay that little bit lighter than the background. Uh, that's warm. That's cool. What else is cool? This. Oh, yeah. That shapes under there. Okay, so I can I can turn up each of these colours, create relationships with them. Now they're on, I can see where those warms get darker and warmer. I can see where the cools get darker and cooler, or vice versa. through. Still got my purple brush ready to sort of clean up some bits and pieces but most of that's for later on. Before I go for a little break, I think that deserves a bit of a flogging with a spatula.
Why is that? What are you doing that for? Because it breaks the edges and it creates a sort of movement and dynamism. It also sort of lifts the paint a bit thinner off the surface. Which allows more paint to go on. Um, still move it around quite happily, it's still there. Still nice and loose. Still got a few nice brushes to uh, to get working. So shall we have a little time lapse? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'll come back and start turning up the colour.
we, we were distracted by books then. <laughs> The cosmos is all there, all there ever was and all there ever will be. Yeah. That's how he starts the book. In fact, find me the first, the first line of the book. Just remind me. Are you ready already? Uh, a, long, a long time ago, okay. and awesome. then I watched the, the series he made, and the, the TV series was just wonderful. Same with... Brunovsky. Well, actually, Brunovsky, I saw the series first. I think everyone did. That's how we were introduced to him. Uh, the Ascent of Man. The cosmos is all that it is, or ever was, or ever will be. Yeah. Unless you uh, believe in a Judeo Christian God, who is the first God to ever exist outside of the cosmos, independently of it. But, yeah, it doesn't show up as much as it used to. going to start with a kind of a halfway to the light kind of thing. So I'm going to put a few of these lighter greeny colours in. Still not enough. Still not green enough. Let's see what we can get away with. What's this doing? There we go. No, oh, it's all over the place. going. Let's get the greenest bits. Still not the actual lights yet. And I'm trying to be gestural about how it goes on. It's still a relatively firm brush. So I need a bit more oil on that. And a softer brush, I'm going to work my way to a softer brush for this. But that's really just for the very last layer. Oh, that's going to have a bit in there. So it's still shadows, but slightly different hints of colour. Shadows are cooler and not as dark either. Same there. So is that starting to behave itself? The earth is a place. Full stop. Okay. What? What is sorry? I love the sentence. The earth is a place. It is. I love it. I love it. It's just like very simple, very short, and it feels like a, out of a poem. Well, I just read, but 
That, the thing about everything Carl Sagan, Carl Sagan was so poetic. Huh? Carl Sagan was, you know, he turned dry physics into poetry, and that was that was his his, his unique power, really. And it's been it's been done since, but he kind of, you know, if you think of people like people like Neil deGrasse Tyson or or Brian Cox, and they'll all say Carl Sagan was this massive influence. He kind of paved the way for how we see, uh, you know, uh, science education or, or awareness or whatever you'd call it. Um, I may have to borrow this one day. Mm. But now I'm concentrating on something else, as you well know. Yeah, but you need someone to sit next to you and hum. Really not. Mm. No. I've read two pages and I understand everything of this. Why? Well, I need you to explain to me everything that says in here. What are you talking about? You got quite adversarial there. I was singing the music from the TV show. I don't have a I've seen the TV oh, show. If you didn't talk over me, you might have picked something up, but you know. <laughs> I don't know. If you don't understand something, the best thing to do is start shouting. I think that's probably in that book somewhere of how to do something. No, it's just assuming you're making fun, which is what <laughs> <laughs> normally happens. So, you know, no, I don't have no, you know, TV series, you know, have a TV. <laughs> no, the, the music, the music in the cosmos was just fantastic. They had, uh, had these little animations and it'd have this music with it. They'd go, it was great. Um, someone out there knows what I'm talking about. Ah, oh, okay. I'm finding a few more of these greens now. I'm nearly ready. Well, it looks like we moved away from uh, the theme of flowers, but as you well know, William Blake said the universe in a flower. So we're talking about the cosmos, uh, and we got flowers. So there you are. I think it was the universe in a grain of sand. And it heaven, was in a flower. Heaven in a wild flower. Uh, was it? Well, why don't you look it up and okay, find out? Okay, let me look it up. Yeah. I think it was in a white I mean, flower. Don't believe me, whatever you do. I think it was a universe in a white flower. No, you do think that, don't you? I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying, like, we haven't moved that much away from flowers. Right, no. Yes. No, not dark enough. It's to be bluer. Maybe some of these darks need to come in when this. Oh, I've just accidentally mixed the right colour. So some of these lights and some of these stalks. doing what I want, not really. Uh, can I go for a softer brush already? I think I can. Look, 
go back to some of those ducts. Need to get some red in there. That's where it's really going to jump out. Okay. Back into the purple now. So I've got these little what's that do? Hmm. Too green. Yeah, it's this sort of that papery stuff around the top of the stem of a of a daffodil. Quite fun, isn't it? Viv Crandley says, "Duffs are such happy flowers." Hmm. They are. They're, they're they're a cheerful bunch. Get some of these more intense greens in there. That's where they belong. Yeah, that was in there too, wasn't it? Uh, absorbed by that book no. to the extent that you look like forgotten forgotten about your job <laughs> Okay, got some stalks there, that's good. Let's put a bit of that lighter purple in. Spare hair, good. Okay, 
Uh, so now I've got a couple of soft brushes and I guess I can start putting the lights in. I think it's time. I'll get some oil on that. I'll start with some of these yellows. And as soon as a bright bit goes on, it's going to start to mix in with what's underneath. Sort of working from the back first. Okay, let's do some of these oranges. There we go. What else has got some of that? Oh, was that it? <laughs> no, no, there's some here. This is probably where I have to be a bit more precise. Right, I'll go back to that light. A bit more oil. And really simple dancing brush marks. Let's just keep it loose. We've got some there, that's nice. Just try and get the language of the flower not too descriptive. Might have to get more than one brush on the go here uh, for a more lemony or sort of, more sort of minty yellow. So for those highlights there, that's an edge. That's an edge. What else? Top of these here. Right, is this brush going to hold its shape? A bit of fluff sticking out of that. How unhelpful. What's that doing? And the more it blends in, the more effect it will have. That. Yellow enough.
Okay. Still not sure about this. About what? Um, this method. What's this doing? Hey, wakey, wakey. You know, uh, I just have to sort of dance around the whole thing with this. There's a bit of light there. There's a bit. There's a bit. There's some down there. This has got some. Let's do it. Got this light over here. I should just use that background colour to put in some of those shapes. Okay, a bit more daffodilly now, isn't it? Uh, but I'm still not quite there. So it's spatula time again. Let's get some energetic marks coming out. Didn't it? 
to stop fussing about this, it doesn't matter. Oh, it looks very important. Actually, that's already better. Okay, this green has turned out to be quite important. Okay, what else has got this orange involved? This a little bit less. I'm going to need a green version of that yellow for a few places that's oh, still warm. This dog doesn't know, does it? Okay, it's time for a proper socket brush and uh, brush which I don't use very often. It's a, it's a rather nice rosemary one. some white and make a, a weak oily white and just add a little bit of yellow to it and then I can start to do a few other little bits and pieces like that that edge that point Oh, well. A bit more white. Let's start with the lightest bits. Let's make it ever so slightly green. Oh, you know. Oh, what's? Oh, that's ruined everything. Start again. Uh, I got a little bit of orange in it, and it absolutely wrecked it. And I would have carried on if I'd been lazy and gone, oh well, I suppose I'll get away with that. But I absolutely wouldn't have got away with it. Okay, let's clear a bit of palette. Okay. Let's dry that out. Let's put 
put a bit of oil on there. Put a nice bit of white in it. And just the tiniest dab of green, just on one side, and then even more white in that. light in there and this soft brush is just going to let these looser marks flow out. So I'm reloading the brush as I go along at the moment to keep that crisp edge. I can put those, start to put those edges in. Um, the last thing to be doing will be shop downstairs. No, it's up in the open. Oh, oils. Okay, so now it's mixing in on the surface, so I can put a bit on here, lighten that, reload it again. Let's get a hard edge on this. Let's get a bit of one on there. There'll still be a brighter yellow to come afterwards. Let's get a top corner on that. Let's get some shape onto this petal. That's got a bit of other stuff going on. It's okay, isn't it? So yeah, let it mix in as it goes. So I hope the cheerfulness of the uh, of the daffodils is coming through. They look like they're in a good mood. Now let's get to this yellow. Make it a fair bit more intense so we can pop a bit in there. There we go. And that looseness is giving it a certain amount of liveliness as well. There. Simple little marks just to sort of define an edge here and there. Eh. That wasn't the mark I should have been making. How about here? There's a little bit sticking up there. And again, it does mix in a little bit as it goes, but yeah, let's just wreck that. Maybe I could do with a soft brush for a few of these darks as well. No, that's okay. There's a bit of bright yellow in there. A little stamen in the middle. Let's see if that works. I think I've got away with that. Point. I might have to take some paint away and put some other back, but at the moment I reckon I might just about manage this. I can get that edge on. I can get a bit of this on there. Oh, small soft brush. Sorry. 
Yeah. There's a few in there. That might be a bit much. Greener one, that in there, darker. <laughs> That's so interesting, isn't it? How, how much darker it can be. Again. Some bits of it, I just I just can't make them yellow enough. Uh, I did have a tube lying around. Where did it go? This one. That's the one. So I've got some Oreolin yellow here. It's a much weaker tinting strength, but it is basically lemon yellow. Um, so I talk about using two colours. At this point. I can start getting actual dollops of this up on a soft brush. It's quite transparent as well. But there's places that just needs pasting on and that's one of them. They look delicate but are quite solidly structured daffodils, aren't they? Hmm. I find they quite solid in their yellow Fluffiness. They're not really. No, are they're, they? they're very defined. They're very defined. Yeah, trump they? trumpets. Yeah. Okay. What else needs a bit of that? That does. A couple of little flicks here and there. Let's get some of that brighter yellow onto here. Again, just trowel it on at this point. Just to turn that yellow up. Okay, am I overworking it now? I think I probably am. So the last, the last thing I'll do is uh, get that. Let's get a small brush, smallish. Let's dive into this uh, purple here. Mix it with a bit of the grey. Let's put in a few darker bits. Let's define a few edges as and where we need them. So that, that can have a new edge. That wasn't much of one, was it? That can have a little shape. That can have a little shape. Define this. What's this do? So, any any more interesting messages? No. <laughs> you said that like I didn't deserve any. No, no, sorry, because I was talking. <laughs> no, there aren't any messages. Sorry, I'm not sure. Then you know. Oh, Oh well. I think we are wandering lovely as clouds, you and I, tonight. <laughs> that's all right. Well, that's what it's all about, really. Well. <clears throat> yeah, some bits of this work better than others. Okay, now back to this shadow colour. Define a bit in there. Actually, 
some edges more important than others. Don't worry too much about that. That's kind of okay. Uh, Getting softer bits over here. That could be a lot more solid, that shape. Same in here. And some of those sort of natural rhythms. Interesting. It should be brown. Yeah, that's okay. bits of this a bit more solid and just oh. define some of those shapes not all of them I think that's pretty much well that's pretty much what it's going to be uh, whatever I would prefer that's kind of where it's going the last thing I can do is get that big brush out again there it is How are we doing for time? About five minutes. All right, there you are. Timed that pretty well. So there's a softer black coming from up here, under here, sorry. If I go right into this purple colour and really lay it in there, in here, then I can make particular edges really jump out. Really darken it up behind. And again. Like I said, it's all sort of mixes in. Using quite a small brush here, but I can move up to a bigger one should I choose. Turn up that. That contrast. Seeing anything? Bit cheeky. Put it in anyway. I've still got my spatula. 
can soften it with that a bit. It's a bit of energy going on. It leaves little white marks where it's picking up too much paint. I can work into those a little bit. Okay, uh, that's a bit of black. Oh, it's picked up a little skin, which I don't want. Bring it in, make it disappear. Well, I'm not entirely sure this has been very successful, but I guess that's the nature of this, isn't it? They do tell me how awful you think the daffodils are, and uh, what I should have done instead. <laughs> Anne says, Anne says, always great to watch and learn. Thanks for another great session. Oh, thank you, Anne, and I very much appreciate your support. Um, and one of my beloved patrons who helps make this whole thing happen. So if you're watching this and enjoying it, uh, it's partly how you have to think. Yeah. Okay, this last little bit, so I'll, I'll keep this simple is the edge of a vase this again is over here as well the shape of the top of the water I'll borrow a little bit of that purple for it Will it? And I keep saying that will do, and I don't mean it. It won't do at all. Nothing about this is good enough. I can't see very well what you're doing down there, so... Oh well. Um, I think I'll give up at this point. You're going to sign it in yellow? No, I suppose orange. I ought to. Um, uh, I'll use the orangey colour. So I'll put this up in bean shop tomorrow as a terrible warning. <laughs> Again, it's part of the nature of doing this is to make me sit down. Uh, quite often, uh, by the time Monday comes around, I could happily be doing. Uh, well, not happily. I, I could. I could have the pressure of other work. Distracting, but this is time I've put aside for it and I sit down and I will do something. And the experiment 
I'm doing that. Excuse me, okay, I can't. Oh, It's better to focus just on the painting, that's it. Yeah, I just thought I'd share what's over there. So, there's my, well, what I'd normally call the tada, but it's not much of a tada today. It's more of a, a to oh dear. <laughs> but that's the nature of, uh, that's the nature of painting. You try some things. And some some stuff works out and some doesn't. I tell you what, we could do my last thing. If you could go to the phone and camera. Right. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was not. That's not been helping. But uh, here we go. Cutter's enjoying himself. Zoom in He's always having a good time. He's looking at the chair. He might guess on in a minute if he feels like it. Mm. Right. If I zoom in, I'm trying to look at the screen and see at the same time. But you can see it's very loose. And it's deliberately loose. I think a better surface to paint on would help it. But hopefully when we jump back there is some sense of a, a daffodil energy there. And uh, yeah, should we go back to the main one? Yes. Yeah, so I, I hope that's been uh, fun for you as well. And um, I'll consider this a, a lesson. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, I will attempt more flowers in the future, and we'll see. We'll never know. You never know what might work out, what might come out of it. But and I might sit down for ten minutes with this and see if I can figure it out. So, um, thanks for coming again, and we'll see you.